All right. Somebody's here. I'm here. I'm going to hang out, see what's going on. If you're just tuning in, uh, if, if there's not a live thing up here, that means it's not live because this will be on later on when it's not live. But if it, if it is live, hello, greetings, stop in, say hi. Let me know how the audio and video is. I'm also pulling up my laptop in case I need to look something up. Hello, hello. Gonna uh, hang hang out for a little bit. If anybody has anything they want to talk about, com converse. I'm probably gonna do a little bit of a coronavirus rant. Maybe. Hello, Chris Awalt. Hello, Elijah. Hello, Diane. Hello, everybody. If you come in, say hi. Let me know how the audio and the, the visual video is working. I'm trying to get, I don't know why my laptop's not connected. Off-grid life. You just never know. I'm trying to get my laptop to connect. Now, I generally don't have the laptop going. I don't use that for instant um, information so I can look like an expert. But I thought if there were some memes I wanted to uh, point out, if I could get the laptop to come up, and then I was going to um, bring those up so I could remember them and not misquote. Uh, there's so many stupid things going on right now. Oh, man, I stuck, stuck that in my mouth. That's probably bad. All right. So if anybody has any questions, comments, anything they want to talk about, uh, I'm going to give it a little bit before I, uh, it, yeah, it's just a little bit of a, just a little irritation, a little, uh, little irritation with uh, quite a few people online, primarily so-called experts or people who think that they're experts because they read a couple of articles, which is almost everybody on the internet. Experts in uh, preparedness, experts in survival, experts in uh, coronavirus, experts in whatever. And the thing that really irritates me the most is this uh, really, really condescending idea that if somebody goes out and spends their own money that they earn, they exchange their own hours and minutes of their life for uh, paper, that if they go out and then exchange those paper, that paper which represents the hours and minutes and seconds of their life for anything else, um, that they're to be ridiculed. So, um, you know, as a as a person who's lived off grid for a long time, I don't have to go to town. I don't need to go to town. It's not because I've got a bunch of toilet paper stored up. It's just because I know how to live without it. And um, uh, 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 civilization people lived uh, without toilet paper for. Uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years. Uh, toilet paper really didn't get into widespread <laughs> use until about the 14th. People are just pinging, pinging me. It's about the 14th century, but and not even widespread then. It was used then, and mainly in China. The toilet paper wasn't even really uh, popularized in the United States as an industrial product until around 1857. So, I mean, people used paper. They used the Sears robot catalog or whatever, but. Uh, if somebody takes the hours and minutes and seconds of their life represented by money and then they, uh, all right, uh, Diane, no problem. And then they go and want to go buy toilet paper. Why is that any of your business? And why is that stupid? Somebody would have to explain to me why it's anybody's business at all. And second of all, one of the, one of the worst, uh, memes I just saw was by an author a, a, who put up a meme and it basically trying to explain to people that toilet paper isn't going to help you keep from getting coronavirus. Well, no, I'm going to try to not say any bad words. Does anybody actually believe that toilet paper is going to help you? I don't think anybody, but people aren't buying toilet paper because they think it's going to stop them from getting coronavirus. They're not buying, they're buying toilet paper because they're afraid that the system of just in time delivery of goods and goods and services could be interrupted. You idiot. And so, you know, I'm not running out and buying toilet paper, but if somebody does, it's their own money. Why, why do you care what somebody else does? Uh, if somebody goes out and buys, you know, 40 cases of water, they have water. Maybe you don't. What, I, I, I'm, I'm just sitting here trying to figure out 
why this is a thing. Why why is it now just all of a sudden it's funny that we're going to like ridicule people who want to be more prepared than you are. Now, I could ridicule you because I'm way more prepared than you are. I guarantee you after 20 years living off grid, I'm way more prepared than you are. So uh, now I'm watching these these people that might maybe went camping, went glamping sometime. Maybe they, they took a survival class or maybe they watched a YouTube video on how to start a fire without uh, matches. And they're sitting there like ridiculing people because people go out and buy. Obviously, I wish more people lived a preparedness lifestyle where they didn't have to run out and buy stuff. Obviously, I wish more people lived off grid or they lived in a way where they weren't dependent on just in time delivery and goods and services. Obviously, I believe that. And I, and, I, and I preach that. But I don't understand. People go out and buy water and toilet paper because they're either uh, they think uh, based on what they've understood that there could be an interruption in services, <laughs> that something bad could happen. Something bad could happen. Maybe it's not even Maybe they go out and get a bunch of toilet paper and then uh, North Korea goes crazy. I, I, it's, it's their own business. <laughs> I don't. I don't even care why. Why? It, it, aren't we okay that the economy is getting improved by people going out and buying toilet paper and water? And I'll tell you why. The reason why most people who act like they are upset about somebody else going buy toilet paper is because they're too stupid to go out and do it themselves or to prepare for themselves, and they're they want it to be there at the last minute. You know, they're like, well, maybe that person's buying my toilet paper that I'm not going to go get right now because I'm smarter than everybody else. And somehow there's not going to be any when I want some. Well, I hope there isn't any when you want some. I hope there isn't any. Then you can uh, learn what civiliz- uh, billions of people living on this earth did for thousands of years before uh, somebody invented uh, mass-produced uh, industrial toilet paper. Uh, I... <laughs> I, I'm watching this and I'm just going, really? And so it's like, it's like, uh, I, I don't even know, I, I can't even come up with a good metaphor. It's like the worst prepared person in history is sitting there being the judge on uh, America's Got Preparedness. Like, they're the judge now. You're the judge of what somebody else needs. And so they, it's a joke now. We're going to have uh, people like filling their garages with toilet paper. So, if you got money, and you feel like toilet paper is a good investment, go buy it. Help the economy. I went to the store yesterday. I'll tell you this. You have no idea why somebody's doing what they're doing. You have no idea. Um, I was in the store yesterday, and we bought toilet paper. You know why we bought toilet paper yesterday? Because we normally have three people using the outhouse, and now there's ten. There was ten this this last couple of days so we bought toilet paper and i know some idiot probably saw us in the line with toilet paper and went, i'm more i'm more better than this person because they're buying toilet paper how about we just let people buy whatever they want to buy with their own money that's what i'm thinking now i'm not an expert on coronavirus but neither is anybody else that's pontificating about this online And I don't know how many times somebody's told me, well, I've read a lot of articles. I don't care how many articles you've read about it. You still don't know anything. You don't know anything. There's two things that you need to accept in order to have some humility as far as science and everything else. One is the people on this side of the issue, the science side of the issue, will lie to you. There's a lot of reasons they lie. Governments are in the business of... uh, of mitigating panic. That's what they do. That's their main job. And that's what you want them to do. Yeah, you want them to be there to mitigate panic because people are the mass man are they're they're spooked easily. And that doesn't mean you want them to lie to you, but that's what they do. They're in the when you are in the business of mitigating panic uh and you don't have a moral compass and you don't we don't live in a uh theologically uh uh adept society in other words you you whether or not you have a moral compass or not we could argue about that but when your job is to mitigate panic people lie they lie all the time they lie about science they lie about uh economics they lie about all all kinds of things to keep people from panicking 
And then they tell you that they did it later on. I mean, if you ever read a history book, in every history book, history book is the history of you finding out what really happened. That's what history is. And so that side of the issue will lie to you. The conspiracy theorists will lie to you. People writing articles all the time have flawed methodology. All the, I, I, I'm not a scientist, and I can look at an article and say, well, there's flawed methodology. Their, their, uh, sa- uh, their sample wasn't broad enough, or they didn't interview. I mean, all kinds of problems. There are people who are respected um, experts in the field of infectious diseases who are talking about things, and that's fine, and you go read it. But that doesn't mean, if, if they knew all about this beforehand, then why are we just now coming up with a vaccine? They didn't know this was going to happen. They, they were ignorant of it, and now they're learning. So now we got a, a thousand, thousand uh, online experts who are experts now in survival, which they aren't. They are experts in prepping, which they aren't. They're experts in an infectious disease, which they aren't. And all they're going to do is sit online and, and anybody, here's the thing, write this down. Anybody who's less prepared than you is a fool. Anybody who's more prepared than you is in panic. Doesn't that sound about right if you watch online? That's how you make yourself the arbiter, the final arbiter of truth. You're the one who's the center point of history. Everybody who's more prepared than you is obviously a whack job who is scared and operating out of fear. Anybody who is less than prepared than you is obviously a fool who doesn't have the ability to understand science or reality or probability. That's what people do. They set themselves as the, as the center point and then they go, and I, all I'm saying is, why don't we just, why don't you let people spend their money doing whatever they want to want to do here these are products that are for sale there's nobody else should even be involved with it other than the person buying it and the person selling it if i walk into into i was in the true story it was in uh walmart the other day don't ex- ask me to explain why i don't like to go in walmart and i'm very rarely in there but i was in walmart and i told my wife i want to go look at some of the stuff in the pharmaceutical section because of protein powder or something. And she said she wanted to go look over here. And I said, I tell you what, I'll meet you right here in the little fruit and vegetable section after you're done doing and we can we can hook back up. And so I'm sitting there and just kind of watching people, watching the fruit, watching the vegetables, whatever. Guy comes in, makes a beeline, no cart, makes a beeline to the tortillas and buys at least 20 packages of tortillas. He And he didn't get a cart. He was carrying 20 100 packs of tortillas. Now, I'm mostly positive that that wasn't for coronavirus, but it's also not any of my business. I thought it was interesting, but, you know, he probably, I I told my wife, he probably owns a restaurant or something. I'm thinking maybe they're having a a taco day. Maybe they're having taco day or something. Maybe it's taco Tuesday or something. Uh, There's lots of reasons why somebody would be buying but am I supposed to sit there and go, oh, well, you know, we need an agency of the government to stop somebody from buying 20 packages of tortillas? And that's what they're really asking for. And I've seen it on Twitter, too. Uh, the, the, so, like, right before um, Katrina, we were living in West Texas. And I, it became very obvious that this was going to be a dead-on hit. And, you know some huge percentage of the oil production and moving in the Southwest goes through Port of Houston, Port of New Orleans and all that. And so I had four big barrels and uh, we, we loaded them up and I, uh, we, we went and got some gas, filled those things up with 50 gallon barrels of gas. How stupid was that? Uh, not at all because they ended up arresting people in the town that I lived in at the time for price gouging. The price doubled or tripled overnight. Now, don't get me started on whether there should be price gouging laws. Uh, That's a whole different different discussion. But the fact is, is that I was able to uh, run gas in my vehicle at $1.09 at that time per gallon for a long, long time. 
and had something become more and more dire, then then I would have been better prepared than most people. Is that hoarding? There's no such thing as hoarding. There's no such thing. If you have money in a free market, you ought to be able to buy whatever goods are for sale. That's it. The same people who sit, sit there and complain about hoarding and they complain about and they want laws against hoarding are the people that are perfectly fine with a government monopoly. They're fine with the government monopolizing insurance or the government monopolizing uh, retirement accounts or the government monopolizing uh, 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 buying and selling oil or all of these things. They're perfectly fine with monopolies. They love monopolies, but then they don't want you to be able to go buy something, not because they don't want you to have it. They probably don't want you to have it, but it's because they want it. And they're afraid that although they are lazy and and slow and uninformed, if they go at the last minute to get it, there's not going to be any there for them. So they want the government to step in and go, don't let anybody buy more than two packs of toilet paper. So that's my little, and I don't want to go on that too long. So I apologize for how long that went. But share if you want to. Share it as much as you want to. If anybody has any questions, I'm here for you now. We are live. So uh, uh, type in whatever you want to talk about. You're right, Michael. Hoarding is a creation of the socialist mind. That's right. It's, it's a non-existent thing. It doesn't exist. It's a way. It's a way to describe somebody else's buying habits that inconveniences me or could inconvenience me, uh, and it's ridiculous. All right, if you're out there, uh, feel free to chat at me. If you don't, then this thing's not going to last very long, and everybody can just share the previous however many minutes of me ranting. And I'm not mad. I'm not mad at anybody. I just think that there's a lot of really, really stupid things going on, and it just it just irritates me. I just get irritated. That's it. So it may take a while for questions to show up, but type your questions or comments or things you want to talk about into the little box. Hit enter, and uh, I'm going to look on this other device because sometimes they don't show up for a while. Any new projects? Ha well, there's about to be a whole lot of projects going on. There's not any right uh, currently at the second, but um, there's about to be. Uh, my, my son, and thank God my son and his wife and his two boys have moved down, and we're going to get some projects started. Uh, he's actually looking for some work right now, so hopefully he'll have some work here pretty quick, and then we'll get some projects going. we got little little things to do, and then as... The movie project moves forward then we'll have bigger projects going on we, but we got a lot of plans that's what we have right now um if you just tuned in and you missed my long uh, uh detailed rant on coronavirus and hoarding and all of that go watch it before you comment on here don't comment on here ignorantly so watch watch that first uh and if if it doesn't say live up here then it's not live which means you're watching this later. And I'm probably going to put this up on YouTube too. If you are not on my YouTube channel, you should get on my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash bunkdad, B-U-N-K-D-A-D, and you should uh, follow me there and watch the videos and like them and all that kind of stuff. If you are on my YouTube then and you're watching this on YouTube, you should like this video because I'm trying to eventually be able to monetize the videos so I can make more videos. And uh, we're not there yet. We're, 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 we're quite a ways away. So watch the videos and then like them as well because that helps them suggest them to other people. All right. I don't see any questions or comments coming up, so this ain't going to last very long. Do go back uh, and watch this whole thing from the beginning so you didn't miss all what I said about the coronavirus and preparation, prepping hoarding, and all that. So we had a great day today. Went to church with all my children but one. Jennifer wasn't there, but all my children and my grandchildren. I'm going to um, let you see the picture I just pulled up. That was us. That was us at church.
Uh, several videos they have Joel Salatin and Polyface Farm. Have you ever tried any of his farming practices? Probably, but not as a direct result of ready, reading his books or anything. Uh, we've we run a lot of the same circles, and so I, I have a chicken tractor, and we've done some of that stuff. Um, I really like what he's doing. I like that he's doing it. Uh, we are a lot less uh, focused on trying to make money off the farm. Our goal all along was merely to have the have a sustenance farm, which have the farm capable of sustaining us immediately without us selling it, getting money, and then buying things. So a lot of what Joel Salatin does has to do with um, a cash crop or cash product uh, where you're actually making money and then using that to buy stuff. Our goal for the last 15 years has been to try to not uh, to cut out the middleman, try not to buy things. And so that doesn't mean we don't buy things. We do. I just said I was at Walmart uh, yesterday. So uh, we're at United. Okay. When I was at Walmart with the tortilla guy in that story, that was a couple of days ago. Yesterday, we were at United Grocery Store, and that's where we bought toilet paper. So um, if anybody has any questions or comments, and like I said, if you just tuned in, um, watch this whole thing first before you comment, and then um, you can put comments in. I'm, I'm going to come back to this later on, and I'll see if people comment later. And I, again, I'm going to put this up on YouTube. Also, in the comment section on YouTube or the comment section here, if there's something else you'd like me to talk about and maybe you weren't here or maybe you didn't think about it, you can always put that in the comment <laughs> section. And um, uh, you can, um, I, I will read them and then possibly do it. My stomach's ground because I just ate a little while ago. Ugh, I don't like it. I meant specifically the things he does to restore the land. Oh, yeah, we've done a lot of that stuff. We've done... Um, the back to earth uh, mulching we've done chicken tractors uh and 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 all other types of mulching so hey chris the new bunker wears a jogging suit yeah i'm actually just about to work out um the, i don't i'm not allowed to wear any of this stuff outside of uh here i can't go to town uh like this my wife will not let me and um so uh, there's that. Uh, Chris says, hey, you're looking good. I can see you're in a good place physically, spiritually, mentally, and hopefully soon financially. <laughs> Hope you're right. Good to see your face. Love you too, my brother, Chris. Um, <laughs> you sent the question to me. I don't want to end the uh, uh, I don't want to end the question either. I wanted to uh, end the live either. I'm here as long as anybody wants to talk. So if anybody wants to talk, I got to answer a question here real quickly. Um, give me give me just a second. But if somebody has a question or something they want to talk about, type it in. And uh, I got to respond. To my, my son just sent me a question. And I got to respond really quickly. Uh, yeah. Type in your questions. Type in your comments. My computer's moving slowly. All right. So if you have questions or comments, type them in. I don't see anybody typing anything in. That's the way to end it. That's the way to end this, is to not uh, talk. Chris, I hope you got to hear my rant. You probably did. Um, and look at this hair, man. This is not even okay. Um, I'm probably going to cut it at some point. I'm thinking now that I'm just theoretically or philosophically going to cut it when I go, uh, if and when I go below 200 pounds. But I'm not going to cut it. I'm not going to buzz cut it, but I want to be able to uh, take a picture to uh, have a portfolio to send to the, the audition people so uh, they can they can see what uh, Goa Eagles would look like with really long hair. And so other than that, I hate it. I don't know why any man would ever have long hair uh, when, when you're doing when you're working out, when you're doing stuff. It's uh, I don't I don't. <laughs> I know yours is long. I know yours is long. 
But yours is probably like Samson. Yeah, no, no I mean, I, I prefer a buzz cut. I prefer that. Um, but I just, um, I'm not going to do that because, well, there's reasons. <laughs> there's reasons uh, for working up towards possible audition. So we'll put this back on here. I hope everybody got to see my rant. If you haven't seen it, as soon as you get on here, if this is not live, go back to the beginning, watch it from the beginning. Uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, my main thing with wanting my hair buzz is just because I'm lazy. And I just don't like to get up and have to do anything with it. I don't like to have to comb it. I don't like to have to have a comb. And so, um, uh, I'm going to keep it for a little while. I'll probably, when I get below 200 pounds, I will pray about it and, and, and I'll talk to my wife about it and we'll see what we're going to do. If you're just tuning in, the rant that you need to watch is at the beginning of this video. Don't miss it. You want to watch it. I'm not saying it's perfect or anything like that. I'm just saying it's informational. It's something you probably ought to, you probably ought to listen to. Maybe it's an opinion you haven't heard yet. So there's that. I'm still waiting. Been bald for 20 years. Think of the money I've saved on hair care products. Yeah, that's true. Um, there are people that are that are bald by nature, and there are people that are bald by choice. I've been buzzed for about those close to those 20 years. But I, don't, I even then I only get a haircut about two or three times a year. But um, when I do, it's usually like all the way down to a one. And my hair grows so fast, so fast that I could go down to a one and next year at this time, maybe not, yeah, it'd be something, maybe not this, but it'd be close. Um, thank you, Chris. I thought it was a good rant. I had more to say, but I don't want to be insulting to some people because they're just as ignorant as the people they're making fun of. But there's some people out there, they need to be insulted. It's time to insult them. Anyways, whatever you guys want to talk about, it doesn't have to be right now. Uh, come on to this video later on and type it into the, if it's on YouTube, put it into the comment section or put it into the comment section here on Facebook. And I can do a video talking about whatever you want to talk about. Theological, philosophical, economic, historical, um, sociological, whatever. So uh, it doesn't look like I'm getting any questions, so I'm going to go ahead and I got to go do a workout. That's why I'm wearing. So that's what I was answering the question. I'm only wearing the workout outfit running suit because I'm about to do a, a workout right now. I had to wait an hour after I ate. I found that people tend to take it personal if you don't agree with them. Topic doesn't really matter. That's true. Well, and um, they not only take it personally if you don't agree with them, but they take it um, that, uh, that, I don't know how, to, th there's a delineation between them taking it personally and them looking at it as if you are somehow offended. I mean, that's what gets me. I'm not offended by any of this. I find it humorous and I find it sometimes, uh, maybe irritating, but I'm not offended by any of it. I'm not butt hurt by any, any, you know, anything. Um, I just, I watch these people who are so condescending to other people doing what they want to do with their own money. And, uh, it just irritates me really. What seed will tech get? Uh, it's probably dropped having lost four straight games. If they do good in the tournament, eight or nine, if they do good in the tournament, um, we'll, we'll see. I can just tell you whoever they play in the first round is going to be very unhappy with it. If they play a first, uh, if they play a, a, a one seed in the first round, how would you like to get to the tournament and get a one seed and have to play Tech in the first first round? Whoever they play is not going to be happy about it. Uh, what about the constitutional monarchy? That may take a whole other video. Maybe you don't want to put that one on here. Remind me of that one, and maybe we can do one tomorrow or something like that. Constitutional monarchy. That would be a great video. So remind me. Either email me or message me because I think it might be confusing and it really really probably would light up my comment section if I if I put constitutional monarchy on uh, but read wick if you haven't 
you haven't read Wick, you should read it. I, I got to have one here somewhere. I think I might have. I don't, I don't remember if I talked about monarchy in Wick, but I, we talked about everything but that if we didn't talk about it. All right, so I'm going to head out. I got to do a workout, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Appreciate you tuning in, and I'll talk to you later.